thing. In in that game, he didn't did do anything flashy. The other PL we saw, same thing, nothing flashy. But in this situation, I, I feel like if you're Arkosh now, you're looking more towards that Weaver. But again, it's Weaver into Puck. I, I It's really difficult for me to figure out which hero they want because A, there's so many safe laners, fantastic safe laners versus the Dusa already banned out. And I think SGE Sports, they really feel comfortable with it. As soon as they saw the Lycan ban from Arkosh that... They just pick the Dusa and they're very happy. Taking out the Morphling as well. I think Arkash are running out of heroes to deal with this. The best one that comes to mind now would be that Juggernaut, but still, I, I feel like it's going to be difficult. Yeah, it's not an easy Juggernaut game. We've seen it uh, time and time again with the Tusk and the Blink in initiation, not to mention Enchantress can really catch him out in a, in a pretty bad situation. And then, you know, there's always Puck. And they don't have last pick, however. Arkosh can kind of, like, weave into that at least. Because they already see that Medusa is being picked up. Obviously, this isn't mid. You see that the puck is going to be the mid here, meaning their offlaner is the last that... No? Well, you see that Arkosh are banning the Monkey King, so they might be hinting the fact that this is the aggro off puck. And it's just to maybe secure a, a core matchup... It's very annoying, the Monkey King versus Storm Spirit. Maybe they're trying to secure that mid matchup, thinking that the Puck's offlane, but with SGE Esports, I mean, they could still go for the Tide. Tide versus Rubik, Tide versus Enigma isn't the best feeling. So maybe they won't do that, actually. But this is SGE Esports. This is the team that has reliably ran that CK offlane. And, I mean, do they pull it out here? They could. But other than that, I'm still trying to figure out which hero they really want to dig out of the grave because all of the good ones are banned. There, there have really been targeted bans on both sides of this game. Oh, yep, there, there it is. I mean, this is such a good game for SG Esports to have a, for a Chaos Knight as well. Medusa Illusions, because eventually you're going to get that Aghanim Scepter on CK. Medusa Illusion just can tear into them. The Puck will eventually build some uh, later game damage based on the uh, just survivability and seconds. HP damage that Puck has naturally. And I mean, and it's 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 either the Jug or the Ursa, I feel like, for Arkosh, if they don't get one of those strong heroes, and they need their safe liner, even though they have last pick, that's the only issue with this drafting style, is they've thrown everything down on the ground, and SG Esports have kind of taken it in stride, and the Ursa can definitely wane well versus the CK, but I'm, I'm still skeptical. SG Esports have a very beefy lineup. Yeah, I imagine it is still going to be the Jug, though, because the, you don't, I, well, I don't know, Ursa Battle Fury won't be that bad either, though. It's just, it needs to be a Battle Fury hero or somebody that can reliably kill the CK Illusions in a fight. Even if it's not just the CK Illusions themselves, because the Agon of Scepter will, again, be eventually be a thing. And they just need somebody for that good Illusion clear. I'm really hoping it's not going to be something like a Dark Seer, though. It's Naga. Oh, boy. Oh, man. Well, All right, well. Might as well get ready, get your uh, get your camping equipment out, everybody, because this is going to be one of them late games. And it's, I mean, it's a good hero versus the puck in some capacity. You do have the song set up that is, I, it's re it's very reliable way to catch this puck out, especially with the Enigma. But that's their combo. If they ever miss that combo, SG Esports are going to bounce back so hard. They're very cooldown reliant on Arkosh, and while they don't have the greatest lockdown for the Storm, we saw Tavo playing the CK versus Storm, and you just have these situations where Tavo can always kill the Storm in the side lane. He has enough damage, and unless they really pin him down, I think he's going to have a relatively okay lane versus the Naga as well. It's not great. There are going to be illusions in this lane. He has to always stun the right one, but with Thilia Core, I, I think this is just a classic SG Esports draft. Yeah, it feels like a much more, not really, oh no, it is a much more solid one in overall retrospect. It's just, I've never been a fan of running a support, or not support Enigma, it's not support, but it's it's still like offlane Enigma takes so long to kind of come online to end up getting all these items. And like, there's so much stuff that could sort of negate a good black hole that's still in this game. And it, I guess it's just going back to one of my more original statements I like to say with an Enigma. It's the same thing I say with the clockwork is that it's more the threat of having the black hole than using the black hole itself. That it feels like that's what's on Arkosh's side for their tactical advantage. Because that and is their fight. primary dis disable here. I mean, you got the lift, but lift doesn't even last that long. Exactly. And in every team fight, that's going to be on the back, like on the back burner in every single SG Esports player's mind. But they just have so many aggressive tools where 
on the side of Arkosh, I almost wish the Medusa was on that side because their defensive tools are fantastic, and I think that's when the game is going to get maybe difficult for SG if they're pun if they do get punished on their aggression. But I feel like the four heroes on SG Esports will just run at Arkosh while Costa Bila farms up a storm, and it's going to be entirely on the Storm Spirit, I think, to make the plays around the map because. This, this is an enigma. This is Gremlo. He's going to farm for a very long time, and that's the style he enjoys to play, but I'm not sure if... Uh, well, damn it. Never mind. Ah, oh, look at that. They're drawing over it. <laughs> they drew over that pretty quickly. Done now, indeed. Coming out from the Storm Spirit. Oh, it says sorry. <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, and and I love again, Arkosh. I think consistent with yesterday, Canis Vulpus has the biggest one. <laughs> Oh, I love Arkosh so much. This is great. Yeah, see, he's question marking everyone else because he's wondering how he could play with such small teammates, but... <laughs> and awaken. <laughs> oh, man. Big fan. This is like... I, I've always looked forward to casting an Arkosh game. Like, I... I was going to cast an Arkosh game, I think, when the Sacrificial Cup was still, like, kind of a big thing. But, uh, I didn't wake up in time. <laughs> that was, that's pretty much the end of the story, is that I've been looking forward to casting an Arkosh game ever since I didn't wake up to, uh, to cast that Arkosh game on the Sacrificial Cup. Though, to be fair, Slax had slotted another another play-by-play -play caster, and, I mean... Other than you, E.T., I've had bad history running double play-by-plays. Oh. <laughs> that, I, that's why I opened with other than you. <laughs> I know, it sounded hey. like I was going bad to open. That's, that's the way she goes sometimes. That's the way she goes. <laughs> hmm. But as she are really going to be able to put a lot of pressure early, especially, I mean, they know Enigma. He's going to get demonic conversion level one, so they're going to skirmish at the spot rune. Yeah, Theo the click goes up to the high ground here. He is going to be the main target of the damage. Yeah. And Theo will go down first. And Kenneth Volpa is not scared at all. They might find the double here as KJ will go down. Kenneth Volpa is the one to claim. And I mean, 40 yard does stay. They will be able to get the kill on Crow while he jumps down to the low ground. But still a 2 1 trade. And Medusa is still taking damage by Goat here. This is a uh, Goat's sole job here as uh, he has 3 2 by the, the Costa Bile. Just walking the snake back to the tower. And again, I, I think we, we saw yesterday as well, proven word. Delacor, he thinks he's powerful. He walks up the high ground, but everybody just groups up now. Nobody wants to be alone at nighttime and just immediately gets turned on. Isn't the strongest hero level one, even though tag team is quite nice, but Goat's yeah, go just, just TP top. Yeah, he knows he can't really get this creep contest here and any sort of like early pickoff kill on that one either. So, I mean, they've got the two kills and that's huge. Who ended up getting first? Oh, it was actually Goat. All right, well, that's not going to be terribly useful. Still going to have the good more. AoE gold, though. Well, Goat yeah, actually... More salves for the Naga. I was going to say Goat actually might be in trouble here, but... Oh, he, he is. is. Yeah, no, he still actually is. He actually stole one of the Naga illusions, and KJ is actually the one to end up getting that. It was actually a, a crazy block off from him. He had to path around the trees in a little bit of an odd way, and... Tavo does so much base damage. That's one of the strengths of the hero is his base stats are just incredibly good. He's sitting at 21 more damage than Pale Horse. And I mean, it's one of the reasons they enjoy this hero so much is it feels like you can get away with a lot more. You may not have it. I mean, it's, it's gone back to Shaman, basically. Running these weird heroes just having high base damage. I mean, it might just be because he's also got more strength. Dyer's courier. 
No, that's a 24 Agi, so... Yeah, no, it's... It's just, just a good hero. Big beefy just hero. Just a good hero, yeah. It's the horse, the word you know? The tower. That's what it they is. They did get to kill it. KJ sniped a, sniped a Pale Horse's courier, unfortunately. I did see that. I think it was on the run back, though. I mean, he's got this lightning. I've never actually really seen, like, people take something other than... Well, I guess because there's a sentry here, though. So there's no... Uh, no, actually, that was the D-Ward sentry. So there is going to be a creep here pretty soon. But well, uh, He's trying to get stuff going in this top lane. He's blocking off the large camp like he should, stacking the small, but... Oh, bottom. They got him. Yeah, they do find Crow actually down in the bot here, and you don't want to be throwing too many kills over to Costa Vila very early. And I wanted to talk very briefly about it that mid was in a very similar situation here. Costa Vila, though, is trying to. He's uh, Eidolons. It's not having a little much bit success. of a crazy trade there. And it will be a slower Medusa than we usually see just because of the Eidolon deniage. There's not much that he can do about it. With the four Sobi masks as well, he, he's got infinite mana. He's never going to run out. Oh my god, he is running the four bass again. The four sages. I mean, the two make sense. And I think the third one he converted into the ring. But then that was it, because the ring... Well, no, it goes into pipe or veil, but why would you build oh, veil? In top? It looks like already they're just going back on to goat here. Tavo unable to finish him off, though. Pale Horse being there with the full HP. It's very scary to run up. Do steal a Naga Siren, and then this Naga will proc Rip Riptide. And it is going to be very obnoxious whenever that ability is cast. He really can't do anything on Tavo unless try and get levels and just kill the main one. But there haven't been too many pulls. He's trying to get one off right now on Goat. It looks like he'll only snag two creeps, but still. A huge wave is coming in for Pale Horse. He should be able to farm it, and that's when Eshi might look to uh, get aggressive on him under the tower. Sorry, I was going jump back over to mid real quick as the uh, the trade off for HP goes so low. Yeah, there it's. I'm always scared about that that one area again. It's just a hard one to uh, sort of just keep an eye on. I bet you it's see the bottom four time. minutes. Yep. Yep. All right, two seconds left. It is bottom, and it is going to be taken immediately. However, Theo will be the one to grab it. Oh, top one. It's actually Hannah Stolpis as well. Yep, Connus, he's, he's in trouble here, actually. Theo is going to eventually find the kill with the illusions that uh, KJ is actually the one to claim it, which means Crow might get him. Theo might oh. actually, yeah, he might be in trouble here. Crow does have lift up and now, and does not going to use it. They will at least find the return. But back up to the... No, okay, nothing... Tavo's just continually taunting. I keep on thinking he's going to end up, like, just getting crit somehow. But no. Just biting the dust, but yeah. Having these supports both rotate mid, though, I mean, we talk about it a lot in the Spirit versus Spirit matchup, but it's the same deal with the Puck versus Storm, where both hero wants the runes so much. That's when the rotations can really happen, and one or two creep waves away from six, that's when we're going to see possibly Pale Horse going to be under threat. Oh, yeah. I don't think they could really kill the Enigma, but Coast of is just fine Oh, farming, sorry. I was looking at uh, Connus down here. Yeah, they, they get the... Oh, wow. Yeah, they get Connus down here in the mid, and uh, that's a really good trade for them immediately here. And oh, they drop the, the coil. coil. I mean, Rubik can't do anything about it. He'll at least put Hordiar on the sideline here, but they won't break the coil. KJ is here, however, so the support has Ooh, arrived. They need the heal. Goat does come in. There goes the shield, and Theo will go down, but still, we'll find the trade on Crow. Gotcha. 40AR hanging out on the sidelines here. They're not quite done yet, though, but now with the Enigma TP, I imagine you might want to start walking away from the tower. Or, or oh, not. Oh, or not, actually. They'll just go straight for Crow again. Uphill miss. Goat will get it. KJ with a dominating spree. He has... He has uh, four of the seven kills already. And he's gotten some really fantastic creeps as well. Ooh, yeah, going to get a troll now and just going to continue to put the pressure on. And it's a very similar performance that we saw Dubu doing in the previous or in a couple days ago in the series where you're just always able to make these easy rotations to mid. If you get the right creeps, then mm. you really feel so strong on this hero. And the slight level discrepancy, just Canis Vulpus, I think he died and then he wasn't able to get the creep wave in. And again, the ring was him. bottom and they threw the net out from that net creep immediately. Theo will go down as Gremlo was here, but Canis Vulpus again will still fall. And I mean, you're, if you're the Tusk, you're definitely fine with this. 
and you're just so sad if you're the storm spirit it's your third death now and you just want your level six you want to be able to make some plays or even just increase your farming speed because this is what i was worried about if you were getting anything out of the lanes you were very happy for arkosh but if you start getting pushed back into your jungle Every single hero on Arkosh wants to farm that jungle. At the same time, Medusa's the only one Mid that wants again. to farm the jungle on the other side. <laughs> they will drop the coil, though, but they don't actually get anything with the trade. They'll throw 3-0 back in, but, I mean, there's so much damage from this yeah. puck. Now, he, too, was on a dominating spree. This, this game is out of, uh, not out of control, though. It's not out of control. I was about to say that. It's definitely not. It's a Storm Spirit game versus Naga Enigma. There's always one black hole that's going to turn it around. Well, and with the puck, it is going to be very annoying. But at the same time, Goat, he just needs to be there when it's, when anyone gets glowed. He'll probably have to sync up with Pale Horse just to protect his jungle. But until Arkosh get a few more levels in Canis Vulpus, oh, he might be able to get a freebie here. Where, where's here? Oh, bot lane. Yeah, they do find Theo. It reveals no, the uh, Mach 1 Necronomicon as well. Or as I like no to call really it, actually, the, uh, the Necronomicon. Too much om. Well, no, that, that's the perfect amount of Amanam because it's <laughs> all you're doing with the Necronama Amanakon is that you're farming and you like to Omnom Nom all the farm. Fair enough. But the I same mean, it's time better than top. what I used to say for uh, the, the Helm of the Dominator. That's uh, my favorite one, actually, for Helm of the Dominator is uh, Helm of the Common Denominator. Interesting. Goat, <laughs> however, with this uh, time of talking, Tavo doesn't have that amount of patience. We'll end up getting this kill on Goat in the top lane, but you do see the rest of Arkosh are rotating in a little bit from this mid. Canis Vulpus wants to end up getting a kill yeah, here with this regen rune. Oh, yeah. The, oh, sorry. I was I was still pumping up the, uh, the potential of and the top, top fight. Because they were rotating in with this uh, with Canis here, and he actually has the regen rune still going, so Canis is actually going to be Walking back to mid with full mana, and they get this bot kill with the same time at the top kill. And then it did oh, go down, however, but still. Yeah, he just barely didn't have enough mana for the black hole. He was 30 off, so he just popped the demonic conversion to try and get some damage out. And they saw Pale Horse TP topped to the T1 tower, so I thought they would bring the puck up there to try and punish it. But instead, getting Gremlo is a very nice kill. Oh, Gremlo? Yeah, Gremlo might be able to he find you here. Off. Stun. Throws it out to the range creep here, but uh, with Goat even coming in, the confirm will happen one way or another. Gremlo, the one to clip, get the claim. Now you just need to be careful if you're Pale Horse, because it looks like the T1s are about to fall, trying to gear up for that 10-minute cart. And if he gets caught by the puck, that's going to be the problem. He doesn't have his ultimate skilled up yet. I think he's... No, he's not even saving a point. Storm. He's just trying to farm fast. Zips mid. in. They find the stun immediately out into mid. And with no mana available, Costabile will go down as well. But, I mean, even then, he doesn't have stone gaze specced. Back up in the top lane, though. Looks One like second on Coil. DR. Yep, they'll drop the Coil. But, uh, I mean, Naga's not going to walk out of this one. There's no song specced up either. It's the same sort of scenario as that they just don't spec their... Uh, their early defensive support or de defensive fight disengagement abilities. Oh, and it's a good ward by Theoicor. He knows that if he went up there, he just would have been another free kill. But again, I'm surprised the Naga Siren getting caught up top because this is what happens every game. And the issue is instead of the Naga being able to TP bottom, you're always going to have Gremlo down here. And he's going to continue to do this. We've seen this before where he just sits in this lane. He's going to push it in with his Eidolons, with his Necronomicon. And there's not much that they can do about it except play in other places. But getting Costa Puyue was a big pick. If they can do that again, that's going to set them up for the next maybe 5-10 minutes. But for the time being, we're just waiting on this Orchid coming out from Storm. And it's still a very long way away. Pale okay, Horse. Hiding in the, uh, farming out in the jungle here, but uh, yeah, it is going to be the silence that's going to kind of rule this game. And yeah, you're right. He's quite behind on this, sitting at 4.2k in comparison to 4.9 of the puck. Tavo. That's where the jump on Pale Horse here. The rest of the team is nearby. Coil is up in three. I imagine that's the play they want to wait and make. They don't know where the rest of the team is, excluding in the mid where you see that Gremla has already rotated in to confirm this mid tower. They need to be careful. They can't lose anybody here, but it's really just the Storm. Storm is the aggressive hero on their team. 
but looks like with the TPs they will defend that tower and instead maybe make a push of their own. Actually, the, the tower is gonna go down, I believe, still. It's gonna get hit with one more. Yeah, oh, nope. yeah. there it goes. The the ranged Necronomicon stayed alive for a little bit too long, and now they look for the oh, kill on no. KSJ. It is gonna be a two-man coil, and you see here in Tavo in the back lines popping his ult. They find the kill on Goat. Stun on Gremlo on the high ground. He's actually perma-stunned because of the timer. They will steal stall. They steal multi-shot. The, the song goes out on the back lines. The black hole is huge. It's a three-man black hole. They are going to find the silence immediately, but they still end up getting those three kills. They lift up Tava. The net goes out as well. And Pale Horse, he's going to go down as well. And Crow throwing out some split shot damage. And still, they get a four pick off with this. And that's the setup that Arkosh wants and needs in every single one of these team fights. And that was so close. That was really on the breakneck. If anything, CK, you saw him. He was pumping it. He wanted to pull the Enigma in, but they were respecting it. That's the entire reason why Canis Vulpus didn't get hounded in that coil. But still, only losing one hero, getting four. And that's the exact kill they need. And you see the 4k golden because whenever the map starts getting taken over, Arkosh can use the map so well. If they get the farm they need on these heroes, then we're going to start seeing Arkosh, I think, heavily pull ahead. As now, the storm's feeling so much closer to that Orchid. It was feeling so slow before, but those three picks really mattered so much. Yeah, he's only approximately, I'd say, I mean, looking at Robe and one more staff, he's about 600-ish gold away. And once that silence is up, it's it's going to flip things topsy-turvy here. And, I mean, you don't want that as a Medusa. You want to be able to farm. We've seen Medusas actually just try to power farm with, uh, with Switch Shot just everywhere. But there's... We, we, it's just gone south most of the time, and you don't want Arkosh to have that sort of roaming advantage this early in the game because of that song combo. Of course, the combo is only up every three-ish minutes, two minutes. Yeah, yeah 20, it, it, 200 seconds. It is quite specific, and that was a fantastic use. Pale Horse rotating. Usually, you don't see the Nagas rotating. If in, if anything, I don't want Costa Bili to rotate to any more of these fights because it feels like he needs to stake a little bit of space he needs to take a little bit more farm and if they they need him to confirm this tower but i feel like this is a lot of time that costa Bila could be doing something else well they uh they annihilate these uh necronomicon summons and they do want to end up getting this tower they uh they'll get some good map domination with this one they have a free naga illusion to work with as well but it's only a couple of armor and uh yeah this this tower is free like, you see Gremlo hanging on the sidelines here. He wants to go for the tier 3 Necron, so he's not going to end up going for the Blink Dagger immediately. So it's no defense for that, and this gives them really good map domination. They've got control over the jungle. They already have it, too. There's a ward here. That's well, And you here. see with Arkosh that during that time, you've got the Orchid coming up. They're smoking with it right now and waiting to get delivered on the Courier, but... Naga Siren's just able to farm, finish up her Manta, and now she's not very afraid of the puck. If he ever gets silenced, he needs to be very careful when he uses the coil. And if they get any pick with the smoke, it's going to feel really bad for Arkosh. Jumping in, the zip is there, and they find KJ immediately. That was within literal seconds. They will end One up more. stealing punch, actually. That's a huge punch for Crow, and there goes the punch indeed. They find the kill. Oh, Crow. And that's the hero they really need to help is the Storm Spirit is their aggressive hero. He's the hero that can really make these plays in the back line. And you see SG, they have to split now. They have to buy more time. And I don't know, Arkosh are playing really well around the fact that this Medusa is struggling to find the farm she needs. She's even sitting at 200 mana if she walked up that hill. Yeah, I mean, even if she is remotely close to the hill in the first place. Oh, it looks like they will at least push the back. They'll enchant one of these uh, dire Eidolons here. Yeah, they need to. They they wanted to disengage from that one. They still have the black hole and song combo available if they want to do it again. Well, and even stylistically, I like it so much that now Gremo is starting to be in that more active role. He's letting Pale Horse play in this bot lane instead, and he's getting so much farm on the Naga. This bot wave is pretty much habitually in, and as you need to make a smoke, but even once they get these kills, it doesn't lead to a tower. They're just trying to slow down the enemy team, and oh, they will get Storm. Yeah, they find the silence out onto him with the coil, actually. They throw a reverse coil here, and, I mean, you see Gremlo just walking over, and they have to either break the leash or or take a black hole, and, well, they'll lose two here. Likely. I don't know, actually. Theo is in a pretty good spot. Good chunky fade bolt damage coming in there, though, and yeah, Goat will find the him. finish off. When Storm even gets the kill on Puck, he gets all of the XP for it in P. Oh, fair enough. P. 
Sorry, I thought you said my name. I'm like Pete, and I'm like, what? What happened? <laughs> well, I Just mean, P. to be fair though, P. Yeah. Do wipe yeah, streak? Well, oh yeah, that was a big one. But he fed an even bigger streak. I mean, so. that was the. I think that. It became a seven after he killed the six. I see. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it feels so bad to make those rotations and have that happen to you. It was the perfect read as well. Naga showing up. And I feel like every single time Pale Horse has showed up to these fights, he's been so impactful and been able to really come in at the perfect time. Whereas Costa Bile, it's the opposite. Every single time he shows to have up or has shown up to a fight, he's been getting the uh, the short end of the stick. He's not able to get uh, nearly as much farm as this Naga has, and it's a little bit worrying if you're SGE Sports. And, I mean, 6k gold lead coming out of it, just from the Enigma, the, the Naga didn't have to lane versus Enigma. She did have to lane versus a very strong CK, but going for this Ags build, it, it's feeling rough if you're SGE Sports. They need to get a few more objectives before I think they can really put their stress on the map. I mean, it's. I'm just trying to find a way to jump off of that, but I don't have any sort of segue that I can run into it because it's it's just what it is. And I top, Tavo, have lift available. He's taunting in one solitary spot there, and I mean now it's the damage from Pale Horse. He let that farm go down for the the bot the whole entire game, and now Gremlo's back down in the bot himself to try to do it. But I mean, Pale Horse, he's got plenty of farm. He's sitting on the. He's on, I thought I was going to call it a Van Brace a second there, but he's got the Manta, and it's it's good damage. And you could see immediately SG understand the situation. They smoke up again, and they need to kill somebody. And it needs to be Storm. Storm is the aggressive hero, but Crow, he kept Coil. He's been patient this entire time, and Ooh. it's unfortunate if Gremlo dies first, and they are going to oh, find gosh. him out. Well, here's the thing, though, is that they can get a black hole with these two heroes here if he wants it. He will at least throw down, and the silence is going to be there. So he will still fall, but you see Kane is Volpa zipping in with no mana on this Medusa. They the will drop coil. the stolen coil yet again. They will find two kills with this one in 40 He's like, nope, 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 nope. Nothing to do with that one. I'm out of here. Uh, where did coil come from? Uh, no, no idea. <laughs> and again, you're losing your farmers, you're using your key heroes, you lose another core after you smoke in a very similar fashion, trading instead the Enigma for the Storm Spirit, but you just see this Naga continuing to farm. He's been unaffected by any of these rotations, and it's not like they can gank him in the first place. He's kind of getting to that point where now, Scotty in the works, he's going to become too big for this puck to deal with, even when she is coiling, even when she is getting the damage out. And again, Costa Bile dying, it feels so bad on the Medusa. And plus, on, on top of that, it's going to be a long time until 40 r can even get the items that would be able to contest the Naga at the later stage. Because once this Scotty is online, he's not going to be able to stand in these fights and just click on the heroes. 40 r just not going to be able to find anything with this one. The Coil's not going to do any damage. He's going to plenty of HP to work with. And, I mean, Aghanim Scepter's going to take a really long time to come out. And it's, it's I don't think it's going to come out in time. You see the Blink Daggers next up for 40 r I, am, I imagine after that, it will be... The Aghanim Scepter Rush, because he'll he'll feel that it's going to be needed in this game sooner rather than later. Well, in, in the same fashion, both these heroes, the Puck and the Storm Spirit, as, aside from the small disables, you do have the Blink Punch, which he doesn't even have in the works yet on Thelia Core, and you do have the Lift, but this Rubik, everyone on Arkosh is just so darn farmed. At the same time, Puck wasn't able to go for that Witchblade build that we typically see where he's whacking a lot of damage. He's really just trying to control these heroes up for his team to carry them in that department, which Tavo definitely can do with his Ag Scepter pickup, but now I, I feel like the game is going to continue to get more and more difficult. But they need a good jump if they want to start anything off right. Yeah, and Goat isn't exactly the one they'd want to go for. You see them starting to posture towards top lane. I mean, Gremlo still has Black Hole. We didn't use it in the last fight. He's actually rushing this BKB next. I mean, it's a very good item for this game as well. Gremlo's got a lot of gold to work with, like you were talking about. They even got the Philosopher's Stone. So, get that little passive gold there. Dire Drop a scan. There's nobody in the pit. Not yet, at least. They're just going to continue to farm. They're going to, going to continue to have these items come in. And we talked so much about how good Storm Spirit is late game. And at the way that he's playing, he's going to continue to just go into this Bloodstone. And they smoke up as four. And they just want to get even more aggressive plays. Why? Because Naga's mid. She's doing exactly what she needs to do. 
He's going to be the first reveal on this one. And, I mean, not exactly the target they wanted initially, but still the target they're going to get. However, you do see that Pale Horse is trying to make a move out on the Tusk here. They will throw out the big ult, and the coil does go through. It lands on just one, song. though. But here comes the song. They've only got one in it this time, though, but it's about 700 illusions as well. And just to be safe, oh. Gremlo is going to ult the whole pack, but actually doesn't even get Tavo in it. And Gremlo's like, uh... I gotta go, guys. I'm sorry this went south pretty quickly. And you see immediately Tavo throwing out the BM tip to Gremlo as they're gonna bring in Goat as well. No borrowed time available. Pale Horse called that indeed. Try to blame somebody else, why don't you? They will lose Goat on top of this. So a three pickoff there, and the black hole just not getting anything. And you see that SG, they're like, all right, well, we got some very important pickoffs. There's no black hole, and there's no coil on this Rubik. So this is a free Roche. I, I'm just standing here gobsmacked. I, I understand what the idea was. If anything, it would have been fantastic if they were able to get on top of the Medusa with that, but it wasn't the same song setup as they had before in mid. And again, just missing it on Tavo, he would just he rushed it a little bit. Somebody rushed that engagement and maybe it was the Naga Siren, maybe it was the Enigma, but at the end of the day you both died and now that was a really important fight to give up because you're giving speed to this Medusa now, and now that she has an Aegis. We see so many teams with this Medusa. Once you get the Aegis, the game really changes because now you can take towers. Now you can stand behind your Medusa and with the butterfly complete on top of it, it almost feels like Arkosh really threw away a big portion of their lead. Yeah, Kospiel will just be able to play as safe as they want. Of course, if he does end up getting traded with the first life, I don't think there's much rotation support that could come out from SG if they were, say, on the other side of the map. But, yeah, it does end up giving Kospiel this free farm, free free reign to kind of do whatever he wants and like you said medusa should not be having that sort of uh, ability in this game you're still looking at the net worth chart though you see that it is still 6k in arkosh's favor as the other cores of arkosh are quite farmed in comparison but i mean you could look at this net worth chart here that with that one fight alone it like it does give them that little tick of advantage it's no longer in the 9 to almost 10k range well, and the smoke is is quite good. I think the other is just getting some wards down, but you can't help but feel, but Arkosh rushed that. Gremlo still working towards his BKB. I do believe he has almost enough gold for it now. And then you can start to look for these fights, but at the same time, with that fight going successful, now 40R has an Aghanim Scepter in the works. And now he, it's not feeling like he needs that damage. It's more feeling that if he could cancel these black holes, then that's your team fight on Arkosh. Because Storm, he's not going to have enough mana just yet. He needs that Bloodstone. He needs an item after that. And then maybe he'll have enough damage to deal with the Medusa, but she's just standing proud. And yet we're going to start to see them lose a lot of their towers here. Yeah, they do send out the Illusionary Army, though, as you see that they are trying to make it a run out to Tavo. A Pale Horse, they're just going to leave. They see this Illusion Army, and they, they don't know where all the heroes are, but they got here pretty quickly. Oh, Goat, don't walk up that hill. Well, Goat, oh, actually, boy. just don't walk anywhere. Just just stop walking. And that's the unfortunate thing about this CK a little bit in this draft, is just that the Phantasm Illusions will always lose. Oh, nice oh, hug. Tries to go in for the Coil, does with it, and will actually steal it. This is huge for them. You saw how effective Coil was for Arkosh when they stole it the last time. I believe they saw the BKB <laughs> on the Enigma as well. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, yes. Oh, I've missed that so much. Obviously, they can't do all chat lines because, you know, Arkosh, they're playing on level zero accounts with no Dota Plus in them, so they don't have all chat lines to use, but... That that's their way of throwing it out there. Yeah, they, they all chat for themselves. They they speak for themselves, but at the same this time... This is where all chat lines are bored. Oh boy, they want to go to this top tower. They're going to lose their top T2 in trade, but if they spark a fight that the Medusa can maybe TP to this mid T2, this is what SG want. Yeah, he's going to TP out the tower actually before it dies. Oh, they need not get caught here. They summon out the illusions as well. You do see that the drums are being expended for KJ. They get the slow on the Gremlo. Oh, That's Gremlo. the ideal target. He's just dead immediately. Song expended to try to disengage and save Gremlo, but not going to find it. And I mean, you see that SG, they're not done. They they keep running at them with these illusions. And what a tight pick from Tabo. That was actually so fast. He just had no chance to react there. Oh, oh. hang on. Pale, Pale horse. horse. I mean, KJ's not going to find him. He knows that this creep camp got farmed, and Goat's actually going to get revealed just briefly by that sentry and vision on the high ground. There is going to be a oh, cape, but he's revealed immediately as well as a sentry on the floor. Goat will have to pop his borrowed time, but 
Don't think you're going to have enough time to uh, get back here. There's nothing to borrow as his life is forfeit. But he is buying a lot of time, I'd say. Yeah, 40R also whiffing the coil bottom. He is buying a, a massive amount of time, and all of their waves are going to get killed, but... Still, this is what they need to do now. We're in sort of a, a samey Arkosh game now where they have to reset. Silence. Oh, out wait, onto Crow? this tusk, and you see Crow coming in, maybe to try to help he has kill coil. off here. They will drop the stolen coil, and this will allow Arkosh to kind of just walk away from this. It's an awkward see, position to be in. And Coil's got 40 seconds left, like you were talking about. They whiffed it bottom, so it's not available. Let's run at them here. But still, still having Aegis, they can still just go forward with these towers, and having to use the Naga Siren ultimate before you're level 18 always feels quite bad, not having that 80 second cooldown, it really feels like they're out of the danger zone now, with only 20 seconds left, but again, Costa Bile, he has this Blink Dagger now, he really doesn't care, he's just going to run and hit your towers, and this is the map control you have to give up whenever you're playing versus his Medusa. A oh, nice smoke. Yeah, they do smoke up. The Aegis on the has Aegis expired, timer. though, and that's what they want to run with here. They do throw out the lift, but the Black Hole goes down, and he's BKB'd, so he can't actually do anything to interrupt it, but he had quite a lot of mana to work with here. The Butterfly buying him a spare time, but it's not going to be enough time. They will find the Cohen Cospile, throwing down a three-man coil as well. Throw the crew trying to get something, but they get the they get Crow. The Theo will go down, and out goes the Song. They do have two heroes to work with here. If they want to get the kill on Tavo, I believe they could try. But Tavo's going to at least find something on the way out here. Puck comes in as well. 40R doing some significant damage. He's going to get silenced up here by Canis, though. But they will still lose one, but 40R will fall. KJ probably next to fall as well here. He's getting slowly chased down. Canis with no mana, though. I think though. he's going to get caught. He's still very hard. To, I mean, we see this in Chantress. It's so impossible to kill sometimes. I think he might just give up chase in a second here. 410 yeah. move speed. But very... that's the issue. That fight, Thiliacor, he tried. He even walked into the black hole. He thought he could greet out with the snowball, but then perfect from Candice Vulpus. Stunning up the tusk, he wasn't able to get the Medusa in the snowball because then, then she can blink out. Then she might get the stone gaze off, and then the fight turns completely around, and they have to song way earlier, but... Still, Tavo getting out, but losing the Medusa, Naga surviving. It's always, this matchup is always so close. It's always on the, on a pin's head where it can go either way so quickly. This Butterfly is going to be an extra Pale Horse. We saw how effective Butterfly it was in that team fight last. Pale Horse wasn't really able to get too many right clicks on the, uh, on the Medusa while in that team fight. And going to go for one herself. It's very close to it. The Paladin Sword creating a lot of issues as well. The Ags is almost done, though, for Puck. That's going to be a big problem for the Storm Spirit. We saw before he just barely survived, but again, you lose map control, you give Storm Spirit some of these runes, and it's just similar to the previous series where either team is so good at team fighting, they're so good to find these picks. Oh Tavo, no. With the blink reveal, they are going to come in and go for that Storm Spirit. They're putting some decent damage out onto him, and Canis Vulpus has to get out of here. But they might be able to find Goat at least. Maybe. Oh, there's the blink reveal kill. on Kasbile as well. Oh, Tavo. Bring him back in. They do zip Storm, but I, he didn't start TP. Oh, there it is. Okay, he's good. And he just wants to kill the wave. He wants to stop any aggression coming out, and it's time, right? Pale Horse is going to be in this bot lane. He wants to finish up his butterfly. And SG, they need to continue to do this. They need to keep getting objectives, but it feels like Arkash are really gearing up to fight them. Almost Blink Dagger on Gremlo as well. Yeah, I think once Gremlo has that up, that's... Well, it's up there now. He must have... Did he sell something? Oh, his last two sages masks, maybe? Possibly, yes. I, I believe so. <laughs> uh, God, every time it's I. This is the only downside to a CK ult, right? Like it makes it look like my computer is lagging every time he presses his ult, but it's not lagging. It's just it's, just eight it's enemies summoning, being spawned yeah, around the exactly. map. Exactly, it's summoning eight enemies into the game. And really, it's going to go back to the Roche, respawning in 50 seconds. That's really the only objective these teams are going to get dragged around by. But now you can't necessarily ulti the Medusa. It's really going to be a kite fest. If anything, you want the Black Hole to be on 40R, where he's just going to die during that timing. And then, again, it's going to be all up to Thiliacor. With the snowball saves, will he be able to get people out? And that's why you see the Ag Shard queued up on Enigma, but still, 
it's a very, very close game. Yeah, it's definitely still in anyone's game, and that's like that's the power of Enigma. A sh like, with a shard or not, or Ags or not, it's just Black Hole can change a game immensely. We saw how effective it was at the very start of the game, and it gave them that 6k advantage, which they still have a bit of right now, as you can see with the graph. It is slowly disappearing, though, and they need another Black Hole that worked out exactly like the very first one we saw in this game. But with all these items coming out on SG, it might be a little bit hard to achieve that, as Cospile has finished up his... Uh, is Swift Blink, and now the Aghanim Scepter is done on the puck. And Tavo as well, you see he's queued up the Abyssal Blade, he's sitting on 3400 gold, but I think he'll want to have buyback just in case this Roche fight goes a little bit... goes a little bit bad for them, but at the same time, Pale Horse is continuing to get these waves out. They haven't been able to make a very aggressive play on them, and that's something that SG Esports don't have, where Pale Horse and and Gremmel can kind of stay in these side lanes and push everything else along with the Storm Spirit. SG needs to be together. If a fight breaks out, they all need need to be there as five to show up where, as Arkash, they want to be fashionably late. They want to join the fight whenever they want to. And the Snog down it is going to force Costa Vila to rotate back so I imagine they'll then posture towards the mid tier two here and that's the issue they split up for a second and then Arkash pulled the trigger they had the perfect punish storm and Naga Siren syncing up and Naga was never in any threat there it was really just the storm who could have possibly been punished as it was just the illusions supplying the damage but dying in that vortex it's it's very unfortunate he just wasn't the right hero to respond to that bottom push I can't wait for chat to just be like Arkosh is winning a Dota 2 game? No way! But it's actually quite uh, funny. Well, Arkosh actually do have we'll more than one game in this in this tournament so far. I think just slightly Ooh. being under Eshi's... Oh, it's close. They dropped the song. They're trying to kill it. They got it. Yeah, they've got it with the song. But the BKB came out from Grenlo is the only downside to this whole entire ordeal here. They might find Pale, but the nice Manta... Mana. Perfect timing. What do they steal here? Looks like they steal Chaos Bolt, actually. That's a really good steal. They throw it out into Costa Bile, and you see that they were trying to go into Tavo here, but the punch goes out to the back lines. Crow is going to be the first one to look at, and they will end up getting Thurker instead, and stealing the punch is actually huge, and Gremlo will throw out the one-man Black Hole, but the immediate Abyssal reveal is going to be there. The Stone Form is following through, though, as they're trying to deal as much damage as possible. The Coil goes through, though. 40R comes in. They stole, not the Coil, though. Just the, just the jump in, and they will have enough damage to throw out on the Enchantress, but they're blinking away because there's a, a fight going on the side here. They find KJ, and they will find the stun out on to 4DR. He does get to the low ground. The Centaurs will stomp the neutral creeps. But with not enough mana, an extended long Fade Bolt there keeps on blinking away. They will throw oh, out the, the orb. orb. He jaunts down to the low. He, he blinks, blinks oh, what a away. Oh, 40R though, Gremlo, will we find him? Oh, just barely, he went left instead oh of straight. Ankle's broken, that was a great shoot by 40R, but still, oh, the Gremlo flame, but uh... <laughs> Grem throw? But so it was it, a no. crazy blink a great... forward by that Medusa. I, they really kited them back, they really thought they couldn't fight there, but even Tavo, they didn't have 40R for any of that, that's why he showed up so late. He had to run, he didn't have any towers, there was no outpost for him to TP to. It just felt like a really forced fight from SG. They should have just given them the Roche. I mean, it was it was kind of like what you were alluding to earlier, that Arkosh have that ability to kind of just show up fashionably late, where SG, they really don't have that capability. If one hero is not in a big team fight like this, then they're not going to be able to finish off that fight. And you see in the bot lane, they will trade the tower, at least with the... Looks like the lives of their supports here. I'm able to... I wasn't going to say maybe Crow can get out, but I'm pretty sure that would still end up breaking the coil and kill him. But these oh, illusions are just causing punish. so many problems. You can see that Pale Horse actually got the range drags in this time. And it's just going to continue to be an issue as now he really doesn't have any reason to go. And he doesn't have that defusal build that we usually see. But with this Basher, he really is able to contest with the Medusa. He's got enough HP. And you look at Medusa's HP pool with this Agi Blink. She really isn't very tanky. Oh my She's goodness. really just all right click. Yeah, 1400 HP with only 1500 mana pool. I mean, effectively, she really only has about maybe 2300 HP in total. 
Yeah, it's seventy percent damage with damage point two point five. So about oh, that. Oh no! Amount. They do find this kill on forty R in the top. They will roll in, but Theo not not actually a great play there. Unfortunately, he can't cancel snowball. Well, Costabile oh, though does chat? come in, and they might be able to find Jonas Volpus. Nice work. Yeah, good job. But that is just the Aegis. They can reset as Pale Horse is on the sidelines with the song available. They go for Tavo first. Or they go on to Gremlo first. Tavo will find the Instagib. And they have to reset from this one. If Tavo can get the jump Tavo. on Pale. Ooh, Glimmer came close. just in time. They will throw out the reveal and he is seen, but it's going to be purged off immediately. And they need to be careful. If anything, Thilia Cork, he was just barely separated from his puck otherwise you're gonna see those snowball saves and we haven't been seeing them this game but getting the pick on gremlo they still have to respect the team fight of sg if anybody gets stunned up by the ck the chaos bolt the abyssal blade their cores really can't stand up to that yet and the ck is still a terrifying hero if he's able to do his thing but at the same time i, I keep seeing this net worth lead increase for arkosh and pale horse with the abyssal blade now now he might be able to pick off those supports now he might be able to find that disable onto the puck and he needs to be even more careful so he pings out KJ immediately. Sees him for that one split second. He's actually he's gonna find him again. Drums actually being expended though. They're gonna drums in for goat, and they will go ahead and blink in. Cospile, the snowball will help them find this confirm onto goat. Meanwhile, on the sidelines, 40 are at least trying to find this jump out on to the Naga. Uh, oh, they will actually oh find no. him. Actually, no, 40 art is gonna be the one to find. But Pale Horse actually brought into the pit, but. Not going to do anything there. And that's the Abyssal Blade reveal there. 40R was not actually expecting that whatsoever. Nice. And again, they didn't know about it. Yeah, nice forest. Mm. Dennis Vulpus. He's the most talkative one today so far in Arkosh. I mean, usually it's like Gremlo telling the uh, the casters or admins to uh, eat, uh, what was it, cat litter? I think was the joke. Uh sure is i think it was the I, I don't know chat will correct me i know we're on a five minute delay so chat will uh say if it is the cat litter, if that's where the cat litter joke came from or not I've, I've been seeing it on twitter so you know and by that i mean i've been seeing i'm pretty sure i've been seeing crow tweet it on twitter i see or gremlo i don't know i know that arkosh really like our uh our uh lobby admins well and Back to the game, I mean, Gremlo, he's got a refresher in the works. He's the one Ooh. player that's not farming at Cam's Volpus. He does zip in, um, but there's the Abyssal Blade from Tavo immediately. This, uh, he's just going down again. I blew uh, it is the yeah. line that he says on his way out. And yeah, Enigma's just going to be like, nope, don't want to be a part of this one. Yeah, into the immediate back hole. He just got a little bit too ahead of him. That wasn't even coil. That was just an Abyssal Blade Chaos Bolt. And until he has BKB, that's something he always needs to be scared of. And he's not going for it because it isn't that guaranteed disable that he otherwise would need to be worried about. But still, it's it's a very strange death. I, I wouldn't have expected that to come forward. But Enigma has Ninja oh, Gear it? now. They're really just waiting for a good opportunity. Is this Divine Time or is it Monkey Time? Because she's I sitting on a demon edge. Be I think he's going to keep it a Demon Edge. I think it, it's it got to be close to Divine Time, however. The, even though if he gets Black Hold, he's still going to die. That's where his supports and the Abyssal Blade from Tavo really need to come in. At the same time, he has been dying in Vortex, but that's the really the only item he could go to fight up versus the, the Naga Siren. And I don't know if his back's that far up against the wall, but that's definitely what he's thinking to right now. I just realized that uh, Arkosh... Oh, I wasn't going to say they're smoked. This is actually just Ninja Gear smoke. I, he's got to be careful showing bottom again, 40R. He's the best hero at, at dealing with just being able to get back to his team if a fight does break out, but it's still very scary. If Gremel had a Storm Spirit here, he would most likely just go down. Who? What? Who? What? Where? Who? Oh, I mean, mid? you see him jump in there. Uh, they will find a lot of damage out on the Crow. They steal shards, and that's it. I mean, they find a good pick. They've been, I mean, I didn't know what was going to happen there. I saw SG kind of just standing in one spot for like a solid minute. I thought they got DC'd or something. When well, we see, they're just kind of resetting the map. Storm isn't even leaving his base. They want to see these, they're very scared to show. Once these heroes, they see him teeping back, they will be able to show on the map a little bit more. But again, top tower is gone. This, these Naga illusions are really quite strong. And the Medusa is the only hero really capable of dealing with that. 
And I think with Costa Bile keeping this Demon Edge and Demon Edge not seeing him queue up anything, yeah, the Divine's on the table. Oh, baby, it's Divine time. It's 40 oh, minutes in. Oh, with that zip. Oh. oh. Don't want to bait that DD. Oh, no. You see immediately Pale Horse is like, yeah, that's my rune now. But with the reveal oh, of wow. that ult going out there, Gremlo actually revealing himself there for a brief moment. He's just immediately dead here. Costa they throw out the ult. The song is not going to matter because he's got a full duration BKB and stone formed up over here. And the whole entire time, he Tavo. was just getting wailed into. And Tavo will find the kill on Pale Horse. Pale Horse at least trying to side of the cliff here, but will just get annihilated in that corner. More. They're looking for more. The snowball goes through. They're going to find Goat and borrowed time. Not available. They will get that as well. I wasn't going to say BM tips, but it's just tip trading. And now they're going to walk down can... mid. There's nothing they could do about this, except for the fact that there are no creeps. And not sports. with all the interrupts, he really can't go for those knee-jerk black holes on the core. He has to wait for a very long time with the coil, the abyssal, the punch. He really can't be too careful, and he's not able to find the opportunities they need. And with Roche, I mean, Arkosh are going to be dragged out of their base. I also want to, like, the smoke they need. Yeah, I want to swap over to the net worth, though, real quick. As we saw, it was just like a 6k net worth lead at one point in time for the side of Arkosh, and then the 3k net worth lead after a couple minutes, and then, uh... Yeah, now it's... They've gotten to the 8k net worth disadvantage on the side of Arkosh. SG, they're just... All, with all these team fights, it's, uh... It's going heavily either way, and the net worth just shows it alone. The XP graph as well, not terribly one-sided, though. It's still 7k difference. It's That's recoverable. One good team fight will do it. We're just waiting on a good black hole. Oh, and Storm was very close to the eggs before, but getting forced to buy back. I wonder if Arkosh are going to switch up their game plan. They went on the aggressive immediately, but this Roche is playing against them right now. If SGR are able to get that on the Medusa, then it almost feels like it's going to be too hard for them to come back. And now Mid. she doesn't feel weak anymore. She has a Scotty fully completed on the Medusa. No buyback. She really doesn't care anymore. It was weird, actually, that Scotty was one of the uh, the later items they decided to go for here. But, I mean, Caspiele, she's pumping. She's strong. And it's... Uh, it is smoke. They know time. where they are too. They're gonna check as soon as they see they're not in the top jungle. They might just go and hit Roche and force him back. But another smoke from Arkash as well. Dyer ended up dropping the scan, and it didn't actually reveal any information there. And now you see the illusion army hath been summoned, while the rest of the Arkash uh, Naga illusions are circling oh, down to buy. KJ is gonna be found, and they need to they're, see. They're looping the wrong direction here. Oh no. And now they know that the pit's going on because when Goat was outside the pit, he ended up getting hit by the slow that is the Stone Gaze. They have the Refresher Shard available and likely will use it if need be, but Goat is just trying to get out of here, but there is no get to out. Nope. Oh. This is this is where they pause and they're like, what's your, give your last words, Goat. And well, it just goes and like, they bah. Did they made the trade. Pale Horse was able to get the bot melees, but it feels like now with this Aegis, you're not going to have enough gas in the tank. It, it's the same reason why we saw them banning out Wraith King, where they can contest uh, the Roshan pit. They can't contest a Wraith King, and now Goat's going to go down, and I'm not sure as soon as they deal with this bot lane, you see they're circling. They're Yeah, they're just going to go straight through top, and still working on the Lincoln Sphere. He might bite out on Enigma, but they've got more than one way to disable it. At the same time, Tavo also completed his overwhelming blink, and he's sitting on 6k cash. Yeah, he's a uh, he's a definitely a farm boy. That's for sure. I mean, I overwhelming blink just feels so. Uh, <laughs> Twitch chat's going crazy. Overwhelming blink just feels like a a weirdly strong item. But yeah, he's sitting on a lot of money for buybacks. I mean, I checked the chart right now, and I mean, the only one you don't got on the side of S. Well, I guess you don't have the. Uh, the Medusa one either, but the Medusa Medusa's buyback but, uh, is uh, yeah is a heavy heavy buyback to uh, <laughs> to to. Uh, wait, it's what? only four thousand gold. <laughs> it's only four thousand gold. You know how hard that is for somebody like me who is uh, a oh, gold boy. freak who loves gold <laughs> to be like, oh man, it cost me six grand to buy back, and I'm sitting there with like thirty two k because I played Nature's Profit and bought a Midas, and we're at like the eighty eight minute mark. Oh, just mm. have an ages. Man, I don't, don't want to buy back. 
And you also see 40R finished up the Wind Waker. Now, if they have to knee jerk Black Hole Medusa, can he just Wind Waker the Medusa and she walks out of it? Is that yep. how that interaction works? Yep. 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 And yep. then I feel like this is looking That's the whole reason like it. he got it. 100%. Because now they can just sit behind <laughs> Costa Bile and <laughs> I feel like this Medusa's hit her stride. I don't think there's any stopping it at this point. It's really just up to Storm to cut the waves while Grimlock tries to find the sick five man. But even if he gets a five man Black Hole, they're so tanky. And I don't think the Nog has built enough damage. He wants these fight items, and I think the Snowball just went in the wrong direction. I think SG have a firm grip on this game. I was going to say that it felt like, at the very beginning of the game, it was the four protect one lineup and Kostabili being the one to protect. But it was just, Tavo was able to play the game so effectively, and they were able to get really good coils very early, and then... Mid game, it felt like it was going over to Arkosh's favor when they got the good steals. They ended up getting Coil themselves. They got the black hole that kind of pushed them into the mid game phase. And then now we're here we are. We're not in the ultra late game, obviously. That's another 15 minutes or so. And we're in the late game phase, and it's gone back into SG's favor. And I'm going to say it time and time again we just need that black hole all over again. But like, even with the Stormcraft or Stormcrafter, with the Wind Waker up now on Puck, that opportunity might not even be available anymore. And, and you can almost, see that they yeah, they don't they even care. They're just walking up here. They can't. They, they miss, they, they, miss the the, they miss the wave. This is just racks. And no glyph. I don't believe either for another forty seconds. Oh no. They will steal Mystic Snake. That's not a big steal for them. This will zone for the time being, and looks like he is actually going to get. Did he get stone formed there? Crow has an axe. Yes, he did get stone. I saw it as well. I was like, wait a second, what? I'm like, what how did he happen? stone form? What? Weird. But that's actually going to be really good now that he actually has that axe, because Mystic Snake would be useless otherwise. The Nog Illusions fighting each other. They both die to time. Everyone loses. <laughs> Nobody wins. It's the game of Dota 2. Oh, now they can just... really just take this at whatever pace they want. There's really no pressure on SG at this point. I mean, they've got the free game. They've got the Aegis to work off of. It's not about another three and a half minutes or so that it'll be kicking around. And yeah, they could just walk back to their lanes, clean up the creeps that are just floating about, and then reset. They do want top, though. That That is going to be their primary focus on their next oh. siege. Oh, they do kind of go for Kostvile here, but Goat not going to get jumped. Well, I say that, though. Theo does jump in, and, well, Goat is just losing all of his HP, and they're like, oh, just keep clicking him. Why not? Yeah, farm the damage. The Glimmer Cape. He will get stone formed for the time, but, uh, yeah, he's got them spatter legs, so they're going to be able to find that kill. Meanwhile, this whole time, you just see Paleworks doing what he has to do. And he's just placing all these illusions down here in the bot, and actually, he's running him at the mid-tower here. And the mid-tower is practically dead. If anything, they just need to babysit their waves. They're giving this Nog a little bit too much respect, and Storm could easily mop up these creeps mid, but this is a little bit of a misplay, I think, on SG. They they really just need to walk this top wave all the way there, but back where it ticks out, and they're just going to hit this Bad tower. Bad buy back. They lift up the Medusa. Kostabila, he needs to expend ult if he wants to stay for a fight, but they'll force him back out. Aegis is still uh, ticking off here. But yeah, they've got the they've got all these creeps down in the bot here. They do see that pale horse is back up in this lane now, though, so they're not going to uh, they're not going to run down immediately. Minute on Aegis. Oh, TD. Oh my gosh, just listening to the CK illusions just crit over and over again. Big hurt ears. And now they want to use their Aegis, especially with this DD and. I'm not sure still, if you're Arkosh, you are delaying the game, you're Storm, you're Naga, they're cutting the wave, but you truly can't fight SG. You need to start a fight on the back line, you need to take out, you need to kill Tav, you need to kill everybody but the Medusa, and then the Medusa. And that's such a tall ask. <laughs> it's hard to ignore that hero. Like, this is not one of those sit back and wait and maybe they'll find the good jump or not. Oh, 40 are. Does blink up to the high ground, but immediately they do find Goat. Goat gets his ult off just in time, actually. I believe he might have been semi-broken there. Yules, not crap through though. Gospila, he's got the illusions all primed and ready, but the backdoor protection will hold them off. But they got the With tower. That, I think they're going to reset. They're just going to be patient now. The slow and insidious. I know chat loves it when I say that, but it is literally that. 
it, it's, it's going to be that kind of game play from SG. It's very, very methodical. They don't want to give up the lead. They have a, a refresher just in someone's backpack. And with the Aegis yeah, gone, that could be it. looking at... Yeah, they're trying to make a play on Arkosh, but this is still very risky. If anything goes poor for them, the break on top. They've got Stone Gaze. They've got the, uh, the full-fledged puck. 